Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 1st of December, 2014. This is episode 106, Burning the Midnight, Midnight Oil. I uh, apparently can't say that because it, this is take two of trying to say Midnight Oil and fail. So I guess you just get to hear it. Um, grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. Mara is in the background. I hope that's not too annoying. Sorry if it is. I mean, I um, I'm working a really weird shift this week. Weird for me. It's instead of seven to midnight, which is my normal shift. I'm working seven to three because the normal overnight guy is taking his vacation, and um, I'm not covering his shift because he works until six usually. But the person who comes in at 6 is coming in at 3 instead. So we both have our schedules weird. So anyway, I just woke up um, way later than I normally do, obviously. So Mara just wants to be around me. So Mara just wants to be around you guys too. Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, did you have a good Thanksgiving? If you're in the U.S., I hope it was amazing. And if you're not in the U.S., I hope your Thursday was fantastic. We ended up going up to Michigan. It was very last minute. Amanda watched my podcast, my sister, and she was like, you should come up for Thanksgiving. And I was like, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll try to figure it out. We were gone from our house for 23 hours. So it was a very short trip. I got off of work. I got the kids in the vehicle. Steve drove there. I walked into my mom's house, gave her a, hi, I'm here look, and immediately went to sleep until um, noon. And then I got up and got ready, and we went to, we left at 2 to go to dinner. And then we got there. My sister was there, and that was fantastic. I love my sister so much. Um, other family was there. Also good. But, you know, my sister was there, and that was amazing. And there was good food. There was um, pie, pumpkin cheesecake. Yes, pumpkin cheesecake pie. Oh, so good. It was so good. And my aunt served me two pieces because she knows me well. She was like, is this piece going to be enough? And I was like, okay. And she was like, or do you need two? Because you can have two. And I was like, of course I need two. So... That was good. Mara and Gabriel woke up at 2 when we were leaving and 2 a.m. And they stayed up until 6 p.m. that day. Very few instances of poor behavior. Around 4 p.m., Mara started getting a little fussy. But other than that, like, she was great. It was crazy. But um, they fell asleep as we were driving. It might have been like seven. They fell asleep when we were driving back to my mom's place and our plan had been to take a, a few hour nap and then leave in the middle of the night. But Steve and I were like, well, the kids are both asleep. So if we move them, they're probably going to wake up and we're both awake. So we may as well go now. So we left. <sighs> I miss my family, but it was good. It was a little crazy, but it was good. And um, it was nice because I haven't seen my aunts um, in a couple of years. Because I usually just see my immediate family when I go. Anyway, I gave my mom her sweater. Um, ends not woven in because I just hadn't woven in the ends. Because we were planning on staying a few more hours. And then we are like, oh, we're leaving. I was like, well, mom, can you weave in your own ends or do I need to take this back? And she was like, oh, no, I can weave them in. There were only three. And she said she was going to be good and put it behind her chair and not open her Christmas present until Christmas. And then on Saturday, she said, oh, I can't wait and sent me this picture. She loves it. She thinks it's fantastic. She says she's going to wear all of her ugly dresses with it. And I'm glad that she likes it. And it does really look good on her. It has grown on me. I didn't... I know you, if you've watched, you could tell that when I started it, I was like, oh my gosh, this sweater is crazy! But it definitely grew on me. And it looks so nice on her. It looks terrible on me. I know, because I tried it on. Um, 
terrible, terrible on me, but it looks very nice on her. So I finished something this week. Yay, card knitting. Although this wasn't the greatest card knitting project because it, um, well, let me tell you what I worked, I worked on first or what I finished. I finished Mara's Christmas socks. The ends are not woven in. I need to have an end weaving party this weekend. So I finished these. They are made out of hippie penguin fiber in the watermelon colorway. It's from the 2013 um, Carnival Club. So here's the details. And yeah, they are the tube sock recipe that I published on Ravelry. These were not the best car knitting. Not because they're difficult, because they're not. It's just I was in a ribbing section, and that's fine. But, um, see, there's a spot that I messed up on and didn't see, so I didn't fix it. I don't know if it's going to focus at all for you. Right here, there's a purl stitch on the beginnings. Oh, yeah, it's all, that entire row is shifted by one stitch. So, the um, these socks in particular, because of the stitch count, they were one... The first needle was um, knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one, knit one, and then the second needle for the first sock, and it was um, mirror image on the second sock. So if I forgot which sock I was on and wasn't counting, then it got off. And that happened a few times. I had to back out a few rounds because I was doing it all at night. All of our driving was in the dark. So it wasn't the best travel knitting project, but I didn't really have anything else to work on. So it was fine. It turned out fine. Mara's not going to notice or care because she's four and she's just going to wear socks that will be pretty tall on her. Probably halfway up her calf because she has small feet. This yarn is really, really soft. It's a merino nylon. Superwash 8020. And I worked those on US 1, 2.25 millimeter. Works in progress. They are both new to you. This one should be a finished object, and I actually considered not recording until I finished it, but I just didn't want to wait those 20 minutes or half hour or whatever. I am making for my mom's boyfriend for Christmas a hat. I make them their presents every year or I have the last few years, and I asked my mom what he wanted. I mean, I would buy them stuff if they would rather have bought stuff, but they're grown-ups, so when they want things, they just buy them by themselves. So I asked my mom what he wanted, and she said a hat in Red Wings colors. They're huge Red Wings fans. Red Wings are a hockey team for Michigan. They're the hockey team for Michigan, I guess. And red, black, and white are the colors. So she said he wanted an ear flap hat. So I made him an ear flap hat. And this is the side that doesn't have an ear flap yet. And this is the side that does. And his head, um, he doesn't have hair. So this will be, this will go down farther because I have a lot of hair. My hair takes up a lot of space. So it will fit, it'll come down a little bit further on him. It'll come down more like this on him, which is a good fit. Um, my hair just pushes it, then pushes it back up. So anyway, this, here's the ear flap. I am going to put braids on it because he wants braids on his ear flap hat, whatever. And um, to figure out, I didn't use a pattern for this. I just... I've made a lot of crochet hats, so I was like, well, you start out with a flat circle, and then you gradually make it into a not flat circle. Like, you start out increasing every round, and then you increase every other round, and then you just work straight. So I decided that I would just wing it, and it's fine. It's a, it's a pretty good fit. But that also meant that I didn't have a pattern for ear placement. So I just put it on, and while I was wearing it, put in removable stitch markers on either sides of my ears so I could be like, that's roughly where ears should be placed on a hat. 
So hopefully his ears are roughly placed the same place that mine are on my head. Um, it's made out of acrylic yarns. I don't know what acrylics, but red, black, and white. One might be Karen, um, one pound. The other, the white is Red Heart Super Saver in off-white, I think. And the red is, um, my mom made me some socks, some acrylic socks for Christmas one year. She crocheted them, but they didn't fit really well. She worked off of a pattern and, um, it, it just wasn't, it didn't fit nicely over my feet because my feet are kind of weird shaped. I have really high arches and, um, my instep for my socks, like when I'm doing a, a heel flap and gusset, the heel flap has to be a little extra long. Not a lot extra, just a little. So they just didn't fit, so I frogged them, and I've been slowly using up the red and other things. Uh, and I worked it using a USG hook, which I can't find, which is a six, and I think it's a... Oh, I don't remember. I want to say it's between a three and a four millimeter. I know that's a huge range, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in there. Worsted weight acrylic. I didn't want to make it loosey-goosey because I want it to be a warmish hat, but um, I also didn't want it to be bulletproof because my hands. But I did work on this in the car a fair bit because it's just circles and easy to count. My plan had been to finish this while we were in Michigan, and I would have, but we left early, so I will just be mailing this off to him as soon as I'm finished with it. Basically, we we started driving home, and um, I really only had a few more rounds and the ear flap, so I did the few more rounds in the dark. I did the ear flap when I got home. I kind of stalled out on it because I was like, ugh. Now I'd have to mail it. And now my hair is looking super, super pretty for you. You're welcome. I also started, I'm really excited about this project. I started this yesterday, even though it wasn't the first, but I just couldn't wait for a cast on because I didn't have any socks on the needles. And that was a problem. I started this lovely pair of socks that you can't see anything on. It is a pair of socks that has worked cuff down, and the pattern is Sam by Cookie A. That's what it looks like. And this pattern is in Sock Innovation. I received this book from a friend of mine, Becca. She, she was going to digital content for everything, so she didn't have need for her hard copy book anymore, but I really, really like hard copies. I don't print things out. I just use my tablet for it. But if I have the option of having a hard copy or a digital copy, I'll go with hard copy. The lovely thing about this is that she took it to Kinko's or some other printing place, had them cut off the spine and then spiral bind it. So the book lays flat, or I can just completely get rid of that second page. So I'm just looking at the one page, which I really, really like. It makes it really easy to work from the book. So again, this is Sam. It's, um, I don't know what those are, cables or traveling stitches or whatever I haven't gotten that far. I'm just on the cuff. The yarn that I'm using is really exciting. Look at how happy that yarn is. This is Dancing Dog Dye Works Twist Sock, which is 100% Superwash Merino. And again, I'm not afraid of 100% Superwash Merino socks. It doesn't bother me. I mean, if they break, then that's kind of sad, but I can, um, I can always knit more socks. The colorway is Zombie Party in Rochester. It was the ZK 2014 colorway. And this is the first time that I've worked with Dancing Dog Dye Works. I love this yarn. I love that colorway. It's 
a rainbow with um, brown, basically. But it's a good rainbow. It's not, I don't know. I don't love all rainbows equally. I do love rainbows, but, and I love pretty much all rainbows, but I like the, um, I like this kind of rainbow with a neutral and that's not like a girly rainbow. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean by a girly rainbow? Does that make, I don't know. I don't know if you know what that means, but this is how it's working up. So it's pooling a little bit, kind of spiraling. And I won't even be mad if the, the cables and the colorway fight with each other. I don't care if it's a huge mess. I say that now, but if they fight with each other, I'll probably rip them out and make different socks because this yarn is gorgeous. But hopefully it works. I looked through the project pages on Ravelry for the Sam socks, and there were some variegated socks, and they looked fine. So I'm hoping these look fine. And if not, I'll find something else. I I finished that barn raising square that I started last week, the purple one, but I can't find it. Also, my room is kind of a mess. Yeah, my room's kind of a mess. I have small children and they touch things and it, yeah. So it's around here somewhere. I will not be surprised if I find it when I go in Mara's room and we pick up this afternoon. I will not be surprised at all. Gabriel and I finished sewing that tree. It was finished last week. And look, Santa and his elves decided that they would help decorate the tree. Isn't that awesome? So Santa left a note for the kids saying that he loved our tree and that it was great that they were such good helpers and the elves would like to decorate the tree. So every night the elves are going to come in and sew on an ornament and then leave them a something. So the first day, they put on this trunk onto our Christmas tree and um, they left an instruction to put up the Christmas trees. So we did. We didn't put up ornaments on the Christmas trees, but we did put up the Christmas trees. It was 66 degrees yesterday. I just couldn't bring myself to feel festive. I wore a t-shirt all day and to work the whole time t-shirt in at the end of November. It's ridiculous. So we put up the trees and um, did you know that Santa really, really, really likes clean? He really likes when things are clean, like walls wiped down clean. He said so in his letter to the kids. So we had to clean several things before the Christmas trees could go up. And um, I don't know what this note over here says, but probably have to clean so that Santa can be happy. And we're not reading it until Gabriel gets home from school. I kind of expected him to be all over it this morning. I was asleep at that time. I had basically just finally fallen asleep at that time because he gets up at seven and I went to bed at six. I had a really hard time winding down after working the extra three hours. I think because um, my adrenaline kicked in to get me through the last two hours of the shift. I wasn't, at, at no point did I feel tired, but you know how when you stay up past your bedtime, sometimes you stay up really, really past your bedtime because you just can't fall asleep. I normally go to sleep at two after getting off of work at midnight. So since I was still working at bedtime, my body was just all like, oh, what's going on? Anyway, there was a point to that, right? Oh yes. So I, I was not awake when Gabriel woke up, so we did not do the Christmas tree because Santa specifically said that they have to wait until I wake up before seeing what Santa left. So we'll see. And next week it will have many more ornaments. I, okay, so I have a new thing to show you, but it's not really knitting related, except, except it kind of totally is because sometimes you need a snack when you're knitting. And, um, 
This right here is amazing. Wavy milk chocolate covered potato chips from Lay's. Yeah. Ridiculously good. If you like salty and sweet together, these are amazing. Not all the time because they're $4 for a five ounce bag and that is insanity. I did not buy this bag. I was, um, I'll tell you a story. So I had Friday off from work and we had gone grocery shopping Friday after we got back from Michigan. I think we all took a nap, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember how that happened. Yeah, we all took a nap. And then we went grocery shopping. And we got a bunch of stuff. But not everything that we meant to get. You know how when you're when you're going for a intense grocery shopping trip, there's always like two or three things that you mean to put on the list and they don't get on the list. And I was like, well, okay. I will go to my job to pick up some other things. Um, one of them being chocolate cake. That was my whole plan. I wanted chocolate cake and I had not bought it when we went grocery shopping specifically because I didn't need chocolate cake. But then it was 11 o'clock at night and I was like, you know, I really kind of do need chocolate cake. They did not have the chocolate cake I liked, which was sad. So I got chocolate muffins instead. Anyway, I went up there and immediately got pounced on by one of my friends from work. She was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're here. She had a really awkward work situation that she needed to vent about immediately. And she had been sending out into the universe that she needed to talk to me. So she was really happy that I showed up. And while I was there, I got a text from another work friend who didn't know I was there at the time. Um, that was just a picture of this bag. And I said, shut up. That is what I sent back. And then after I had a moment to compose myself, I said, do you have those? And he said, yeah, I was thinking of getting them on my break. He works night crew. So they break at 1130. And it was almost 1130. Because I had been talking with my chick friend for a while. It was a very long traumatic story. We had a lot to catch up on. And I was like, you should share. And he said, if you were here. And I was like, but I am. So it was brilliant. He bought them and um, decided that they were good, but that they were too much for him. And I was like, oh no, these are perfect. So he gave me the rest. And that is why I have the bag to show you. I, um, I can't say that I wouldn't buy that at like a, a random 11 o'clock at night. I need chocolate thing because you know how that happens but I would not buy it on, on a regular grocery trip when I'm actually like being a smart person and making good choices but if you are if you get a craving for something sweet and salty those are really really good so good so much good and they're they're not the sort of thing that you just sit and eat in one sitting even and this is from me. I don't know if you guys know this, but I have a chocolate problem. Chocolate exists in my immediate vicinity, and then all of a sudden it all disappears. I don't know how it happens. That lasted for... I had some at, at night after I got back, but not all of it. And then I had it for second breakfast. Best second breakfast all week. I also eat like seven meals a day, so... I, uh, I refer to them in Hobbit terms occasionally, especially second breakfast. That one's my favorite. I continued listening to Outlander this week by Diana Gabaldon or Gabaldon. I don't remember. Um, okay, so the book is very, very long. Not in a bad way, it just is a very long book and sometimes you can feel it. I really really enjoyed the audiobook that I'm listening to. The narrator is brilliant 
but I'm at a point where I don't feel like I need to continue on with the story. Not that I don't want to continue on with the story. It's not, it's not a matter of, I'm not going to listen to this anymore. It's just a matter of, I feel like I can set it, da set it aside for a little while. I'm not going to. I'm going to continue listening to it because it will be excellent for crafting stuff. Um, I, have, I have big plans for this month, which you'll see next week. Or actually, I'll talk about them in a few moments. So I'll continue to listen to it, but you know how some books you just can't put down and others, you enjoy it, but you're like, okay, well, I'm going to take a break from it for a little while. That's how I feel like this book is going for me. But it's pretty enjoyable. It's, um, it's a romance novel, so know your reader level before you start throwing this book at them because sex does happen in the book. I'm also still reading Cress by Marissa Meyer. I just, I don't know, it wasn't a big reading week for me this week. Probably because it was big travel week. And I just, I didn't get as much reading or knitting done as I want to do on Thursday, which I had planned to do in between cooking, a lot of reading and knitting, but it just didn't happen. I'm not, I'm not too broken up by it though. Totally worth it to hang out with my sister. So it's December and that means that Christmas is coming quickly. My list for what I'm making people is, uh, it's short. I've almost finished all the presents, but I still have a few. So I'm going to, going to muse over what you'll probably see in the coming weeks. Um, I have to finish that hat and get that sent out. And then I am going to sew Mara a doll using two dresses that she wore until they were tattered. I'm going to make like the, the dress for the doll out of that and probably just muslin for the um, skin. And um, I plan to make something for Gabriel, but I don't really know what. Maybe... Would it be crazy to make him a sweater for Christmas? Would that be insane? It would be kind of a DK worsted gauge. I'd be holding two strands of fingering weight together for that. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Because I'll be making Mara the doll. And I could make him a toy, but he's not really into like stuffed toys. Not like Mara is. Mara loves them. And Gabriel's like, yeah, that's cool. I'm going to go play with my Legos now. I'm going to go draw now. So I don't know about that. I may make him a sweater or I might make him a toy. It's difficult to tell. I want to make some dishcloths, but I'm not like bent on it. If I make them, then excellent. And if I don't, eh, whatever. I don't love making dishcloths. So it's not, it's not one of those things where I'm like, oh, it's kind of potato chippy or it's a good palate cleanser. It's fine, but I don't love it. And then I want to make a pair of socks for, okay, for Christmas. I'm going to make one of the ladies in my knitting group a pair of socks for her husband. That's totally a legitimate Christmas present, right? Because then she doesn't have to make them. He doesn't, to me, he doesn't wear huge shoes. He wears US size 10, which is normal for guy socks for me. But I have big feet. I wear a US 9. So the, the difference between a 9 and a 10 is not huge. The difference between a 7, which is what she wears, and a men's 10 is ginormous. So she just always feels like it's a trudge. So that's my plan for her. That's That seems reasonable, right? Make socks for somebody else for to give to... Yeah. I said that yesterday at knitting um, after the person in question had left and the other person there was like, only a knitter would understand that gift. So hopefully she likes it and doesn't think that that's totally crazy. I mean, she's a very prolific spinner and knitter, so she could just make 
herself a pair of socks and she does her sock drawer is full so I figured that would be a good compromise and those are the things that I'm really thinking about starting in the next week I don't know what I'm going to do after that but those are kind of my plans so not very lofty and that's all I have for you this week so I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string and I will see you next week bye